Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us for tonight's uh, devotions. Um, we're continuing our, our look through the Psalms, and uh, we're tonight we're at Psalm number seven, which is titled "The Shigion of David," which he sang to the Lord concerning Cush, a Benjaminite. O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me. Or like a lion, they will tear me apart. They will drag me away with no one to rescue. O Lord, my God, if I have done this, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my ally with harm or plundered my foe without cause, then let the enemy pursue and overtake me, trample my life to the ground and lay my soul in the dust. Rise up, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake, O my God. You have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered around you and over it take your seat on high. The Lord judges the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. O let the evil of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous, you who test the minds and hearts. O righteous God, God is my shield who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge and a God who has indignation every day. If one does not repent, God will whet his sword. He has bent and strung his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. See how they conceive evil and are pregnant with mischief and bring forth lies. They make a pit, digging it out and fall into the hole that they have made. Their mischief returns upon their own heads, and on their own heads their violence descends. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. Well, Psalm 7 is the longest of the Psalms so far. Uh, it's a cry for vindication in the face of false accusation. And the first psalm to express a theme that will be repeated throughout the psalms, that uh, idea that God is a refuge. David never really explains the details uh, of, of why he's written this psalm, but uh, it seems that he's been accused uh, of doing evil to someone who was an ally, uh, and also of uh, robbing someone who was an enemy, but whom he had no cause to attack because that enemy had done nothing uh, against David. No one likes to be falsely accused, but for someone in David's position uh, as the king, this was a doubly serious issue. In ancient times, the king was the final legal authority in the land. Uh, he was responsible for upholding justice. So to have his integrity attacked with claims of dishonesty and uh, having acted unjustly, that wasn't just a personal attack on him. That threatened the whole judicial system uh, of the nation and it called all his other judgments into question. The same would happen today, for example, if a police officer uh, was accused of corruption. Uh, then it would call into question all the cases that they had worked on. And David's real dilemma is in knowing how to respond to it. If he protested forcefully, well, it might just end up making things worse, and there was no guarantee that anyone would believe his protests of innocence. After all, don't we have a saying in our culture about someone who protests too much? Uh, equally, if he did nothing, he might just be uh, giving these rumours oxygen, leaving space for them uh, to grow and spread. Uh, as the saying goes, there's no smoke without fire. In the end, people believe what they want to believe. And if we don't uh, know that by now in this era of fake news, then we're really not being paying attention. And David responds by doing what I think is actually the only thing that you can do when you've been accused unjustly like this. He turns to God as his refuge. For although false accusations can mislead, mislead, mislead people, God knows the truth of every situation. He is the silent listener present in every conversation. And furthermore, he is the ultimate judge, who judges righteously and without prejudice. 
So David trusts himself to God's judgment. But just in case he is deceiving himself, he invites God to judge him, to examine his life and deal with him appropriately. He says, if I've done this, God, if, I've, if I'm guilty of what I'm being accused of, then God, let them, my enemies have victory. Let them trample me into the dust. David is willing to put his life under God's microscope. And we should acknowledge that that is very unusual. It requires a great deal of faith and trust, and certainly David must have been certain of his innocence. As Bruce Coburn sings, everybody wants to see justice done on somebody else. We're never really too keen to have justice served on us. But if you ask God to be your judge in a matter, then that's the risk that you take. Crucially, David is trusting himself not only to God's justice, but also to God's timing and to the means by which God will fulfil his justice. When we've been treated unjustly, we not only seek justice, we seek it immediately. We want to be vindicated. But our vindication might never come this side of glory. And by taking God as his refuge, David was accepting that. Though it did not prevent him or stop him from uh, asking God to judge immediately and to bring judgment on those who had falsely accused him. His prayer for justice is not selfish, for the righteous ought to be aggrieved by injustice anywhere to anyone. We, it ought to call us to prayer to ask God to bring about justice in that situation. As always, Jesus is our model for how we should respond to such things. For Jesus did no wrong to anyone, and yet he was falsely accused. He was subject to a, a joke of a trial, and he was executed even though the judge knew that he was innocent. So the Apostle Peter writes of him, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate when he suffered. He made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. His vindication came, but it came on the other side of the cross, in the resurrection. And there is a day coming when those who accused him falsely will look on the one whom they have pierced. So too it may be the case for us. Our vindication may not come until the other side of this life. As Paul puts it in Colossians 3 and 4, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The psalm closes with an expression of praise for God's righteousness. David knows that God will do what is right and good and just and that's enough for him. Although he is asked for immediate vindication, he still trusts himself to God. And we don't know if he was vindicated in his lifetime, because we don't know the exact circumstances. But if we take God as our refuge, we must trust not only in his justice, but also in the means by which he brings it about. And this is a point worthy of many sermons. It's one thing for us to tr say that we trust God. It's another thing to actually trust the means by which God uh, fulfills his will and answers our prayers. Too often we give in to the temptation to help God out. Just look at the life of Abraham or Isaac or Jacob or Jacob's sons or... Or, or, I'm sure you get the point, just read the Bible. It seems that it's a human uh, thing that we say we trust God and we do trust God. Abraham really trusted God in the promises, but it didn't stop him uh, having a child with Hagar, trying to help God out in the fulfilment of that promise. It seems to be in our nature. David praises God not for the hardship that he's enduring, but rather he praises God in the hardship he endures, knowing that nothing escapes the gaze of God. 
And so because he has taken God as his refuge, he will wait on God's timing. The first Christians practiced this as the virtue of patience, a fruit of the Spirit. And the more we practice it, the more its fruit grows within us. And so the more we become like Christ, who did not retaliate, who did not strike back. He simply trusted himself to the one who judges justly. That seems to me to be the best thing that we can do in these circumstances. And after all, isn't that really just following in Jesus' footsteps? And isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? Thanks for listening.